Okay. Nou, zullen we maar gewoon beginnen dan? Ja, joh. Hi. Cool, welkom. Welkom to our uh, lecture about nutrition and food. Um, as you can see, hopefully in your screen, uh, you see uh, my home whiteboard that I've been uh, writing with all my information that is from the top of my head um, and, and, and threw it on my whiteboard. Um, I will run you through this. Uh, hopefully you're not looking at it from your phone because otherwise it is very small. But then in this case, um, there's a um, audible representation, which is my voice uh, guiding you through the whiteboard um, to, uh, to have a better understanding of what's going on. Um, this lecture is about uh, stress and the stress response and what stress is doing to your body um, and especially to your immune system and uh, what you can do to improve your immune system and uh, get rid of the stress or lower your stress to stay healthy, be healthy, uh, and even get more healthier if you understand how to implement this. Um, before we start and go into depth, I think it is very important to understand or have a better understanding of what stress is. Um, what a stress response is and how you react to stress before we go into the cortisol stuff and all the other uh, fun and cool things that I'm going to talk about. So first of all, uh, what is stress? I think a lot of you know what stress is. Um, in that part that we experience stress um, oftentimes in the more negative way. Uh, that means that when you have a stressful job or uh, you have deadlines or uh, you're in the midst of the coronavirus, then you understand what stress is, right? And that is the, the negative side of stress that we also call distress. So distress is um, sort of the fight and flight response that we have throughout the day. And when we're uh, uh, back in the days when we were hunter gatherers, um it's the fighting and, and and fleeing um like basic response to everyday life um something else that we call stress is um the fun part of stress so uh let's think about um i don't know you're on a date right or you go to a roller coaster which is supposed to be fun um that's what we call u stress and u e u stands for good so it's a good form of stress Um, so it's the same stimulus, but we uh, experience it uh, different. Um, and we call it use stress because it's a fun, more, more joyful experience. So when you have those butterflies in your stomach when you're, um, when you're in love or uh, when you're on a date, um, it's still stress in a way. So that's use stress. Uh, that's the good form. Uh, then we have two other versions. That is under stress and over stress. Uh, meaning overstress is when we experience distress, so the negative side, uh, for a long, long period of time. So that's when we experience overstress, and overstress can result in a burnout. Uh, the, under, uh, the other side is understress, uh, when we actually, I don't know, uh, you don't have a job, uh, you don't have a social life, Uh, you're home alone all the time um, and you don't have any interaction. So you get bored uh, and bored all the time is under stress. So there's no stimulus throughout your day that you uh, experience a certain form of stress, which will lead eventually to uh, the total opposite of a burnout. And that is called a bore out. So you're literally bored to death. That's called a bore out. Okay. Um, so four phases of stress, use stress, distress, under stress, and over stress. That is what stress is. So now you have a better understanding of what it is. Uh, let's have a look at our stress response. So what happens in your body when you experience stress? Um, two things is going on in your body, uh, a faster version and a slower version. And they're still like relatively pretty damn fast, uh, consider the amount of uh, speed that it's going. Uh, the faster version is adrenaline. 
um, and adrenaline um, um, is um, it's coming from the nervous system. So uh, let's say you're walking down the street, you know, you're minding your own business, and all of a sudden uh, a big guy, uh, I don't know, uh, bounces into you and wants to punch you in the face, right? It happens once in a while, hopefully not. Um, so in a split second, you decide either to duck for this punch or um, protect yourself by raising your hands and avoid being punched in the face. Um, the reaction is faster than you actually thinking about it. So there's no, there's no thought in your mind that says, hey, let me raise my hands to block this fist. It just happens. Okay, so that's adrenaline. Um, then the next part is where cortisol comes in. And cortisol is a hormone, so it's a chemical reaction. So it takes more time. It's still, like I said, it's still pretty fast. Uh, but it's slower than adrenaline um, and what cortisol does is that it increases your level of blood sugar uh, and this is where it gets interesting uh, the level of blood sugar uh, rises uh, which means there's more sugar available in your blood um, which means in itself that you have more energy to react right so you have more energy to get into that state of fighting or fleeing um, so if you want to punch the other guy in the face and defend yourself uh, you need that strength, you need that extra energy uh, from this sugar. So more sugar means more energy. So where adrenaline is sort of a natural superpower, your Hulk mode, so to speak, is where uh, cortisol increases your level of blood sugar and then you have uh, lit literally more energy. So that is the stress response. That is what happens inside your body. Uh, now the stress reaction uh, is also pretty interesting. Um, a normal reaction to stress is where you mind your own business and then all of a sudden uh, something happens, right? Uh, I don't know, you get punched in the face or the, the, there's a car coming at, at high speed towards you. Uh, you need to like step away from the car. That is, um, first of all, there's an alarm phase. Uh, so you get alarmed by um, either your sight, your hearing, uh, your smell, uh, touch, anything. Um, that tells you that there is sudden danger. So you need to do something that is an alarm phase. Um, now that your body is being alarmed, you need to react, right? That's the second phase, fighting or fleeing, right? Fight, flight, response. That's a reaction. You need to do something with that, uh, with that stimulus. Um, so you stepped out of the way of the car or um, you fought off your aggressor. So you you've been successful, you're still alive. Um, there's not a chance that you go back to your normal life as if nothing happened, right? Uh, what happens is that you need to recover for a while, right? Your heart is still racing. Uh, your mouth is still dry. You still have that tunnel vision because that's what adrenaline is doing. Um, uh, sweaty palms. Um, there's so much energy going on in your body. That's the stress reaction uh, that you need to recover from. And you see it in the animal uh, uh, kingdom as well is where um, let's say a lion uh, 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 catches a gazelle uh, before it starts eating it's, it needs to shake off a little right it's that extra energy is to recover get that extra energy away from your limbs like from your arms and your and your legs uh, before it starts eating so before you go back to normal life you need to get rid of that energy that's the recovery phase so um, a normal stress reaction is uh, normal life, um, sudden danger, so there's an alarm phase, then you need to react uh, and recover before you go back to normal life again, right? That's a normal stress reaction. What happens when you have chronic stress? So when there's this, uh, this deadline uh, always, or um, a coronavirus pops up and it uh, stays for a while, right? That's, that's supposed to be chronic stress. So there's a lot of stress for a long time, right? Distress or sometimes maybe overstress um, can lead to this, uh, to this part. So chronic stress. Uh, the reaction is that you're minding your own life, uh, again, and all of a sudden something happens, so there's an alarm phase, uh, then you need to react to this alarm, so you, you fight or you flight, um, but there's no recovery. So you go back to the alarm phase and back to the reaction phase, 
back to the alarm phase, back to reaction phase, because you're constantly um, adjusting yourself to the stimulus, but the stress is always there. Now, there's so much stretch to this band before it snaps, where you eventually find yourself into a burnout, right? So you can only have so much of this uh, chronic stress before you burn out, literally. So that means that there's a, um, um, a vital part of this healthy uh, stress response is reaction, but also recovery. So you need to react, you need to fight or flight this uh, response or this uh, stimulus, uh, but also recover from this stimulus. Good. Now we have a better understanding of what stress is, hopefully, uh, what the stress response is, uh, adrenaline and cortisol uh, inside your body, and what a stress reaction is, right? It's the circle. Uh, normal life, alarm, reaction, recovery, back to normal life. Um, let's go a little deeper into the cortisol. Uh, cortisol is a hormone, right? Um, and um, in this case, it is a catabolic hormone. Now, before we go deeper into that, let, what is that catabolic? Um, catabolic and anabolic um, are parts in your body or parts in your, in your system uh, where we either build up or break down. So anabolic, maybe you know this from um, bodybuilding, right? Anabolic builds up, right? The opposite is catabolic and it breaks down. So during the day when we well, we live, right, during the day, we're awake, we do stuff, uh, we're constantly in a catabolic state. So we're breaking down tissue because we're using it, we're breaking down cells because we're using them. Uh, when we go to bed, we um, at night we sleep, uh, we're in an anabolic phase. So when we rest, uh, we build up again. So when we experience stress and cortisol is in our body, like I said, cortisol is a catabolic hormone, so it breaks down. What it also does is that it suppresses your immune system. And that's pretty interesting. Uh, think of uh, like back in the days when we were in our like, hunter-gatherer uh, uh, style of living, uh, you're in your cave and you have to get out of your cave to hunt or gather food. So outside of the cave, it is pretty damn dangerous. And think of it as in, like, in this type of year, right? In 2020, going outside might still be pretty dangerous because cars are everywhere. Uh, there's a lot of people outside. Like, who knows what's going out there? Um, so like I said, cortisol is suppressing your immune system because it's uh, vital for life uh, to not be vulnerable. So when you're sick, you're more vulnerable. So it suppresses your immune system, so you're less vulnerable to get caught. Um, something else is that it's uh, an anti-inflammatory hormone where adrenaline is inflammatory, right? It's the total opposite, um, also pretty interesting. Um, and another part is uh, where cortisol is, is uh, very interesting is that it wakes you up in the morning, right? So the, uh, the stress uh, reaction is that it wakes you up in the morning and where cortisol is the opposite of melatonin. Uh, melatonin uh, gets you sleepy at night and makes you go to bed and cortisol at the other end wakes you up in the morning. Okay? Um, and again, low cortisol during the night means that we're in a anabolic state so we can build up um, and the immune system gets activated and therefore we can recover during the night. Um, when we have constant stress or chronic stress, the cortisol level is always high. We're never actually recovering. We're never actually uh, rebuilding. We're never actually getting into this anabolic state. And we're also not very good at sleeping. So it's very important to have this balance. Adrenaline and cortisol. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Does this have anything to do with the cycle? Because of uh, uh, light and uh, deep sleep during the night? The, the levels... circadian rhythm, yes, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I can go and, and do a, a full-on seminar or webinar about sleep, and I definitely want to do that. Um, but this has definitely something to do with the circadian rhythm, yes. Um, all right, back to the balance. It's all about balance. And, and again, here, circadian rhythm, too, is all about balance. 
uh, adrenaline and cortisol, uh, inflammatory, anti-inflammatory, uh, anabolic, catabolic, they all uh, need to be um, balanced, right? So you need the right amount of stress uh, versus the right amount of rest. Um, also, during the day when we experience stress, let's say from work, uh, and you go to the gym, or in this case, you do your home workout, um, and do it at a very intense level, um, an intense workout is also a form of stress. So where you think, uh, let's, let's sweat it out, let's, let's, let's blow off some steam, it, it might be actually um, more taxing on your body to do this very stressful uh, workout than it's uh, uh, helping you in recovery. Um, okay, so cortisol, uh, anti-inflammatory, and it suppresses your immune system. I think those two uh, are very important for, uh, for the next phase. Uh, because then we get into uh, where cortisol and stress forces you into bad eating habits. Uh, all the way in the beginning, I told you what cortisol is doing. It is uh, increasing your level of blood sugar. So if you know that your body is fueling on sugar, um, what would happen if there is a chronic elevation of um, um, uh, cortisol in your blood? Right? There's a constant ask for sugar because you're running on sugar. So when you have stressful events uh, or something else stressful happens in your life, let's say you break up or um i don't know like 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 a breakup is the most um like we all know it probably uh, what do you do you grab this jar of ben and jerry's right you sit on a couch cry and munch down this jar of ben and jerry's uh, because that's what your body is asking for right it's it's experiencing stress uh, cortisol is high uh, you need to run on sugar so what do you need to do intake uh, uh sugar because, well, more chronic, uh, more sugar is more uh, energy, but also more cortisol asking for more sugar and therefore more energy. Um, so in times of stress, it is easy to um, uh, get into a state of bad eating habits. So if you understand that, um, I think it's good to look at ways um, to either uh, say that you're in a stressful situation and understand it uh, and then go back to a state where you can calm yourself down um, and be in a more relaxed phase. Although you're in a stressful situation, uh, it's still good to go to a uh, more relaxed state of mind. Now, one thing that you can do is, um, like I do, uh, work with breathing techniques right, to calm yourself down. Um, um, and in effect of eating, what you need to do before you eat, like never eat, never have a meal at your workspace, especially for those of you that are working from home. Um, if you have your breakfast, if you have your lunch or your dinner, um, take it away from your desk, right? Never in front of your laptop or desk, wherever you're working, right? Eat somewhere else, right? You need time to, to digest your food. And... It's, it's funny now that, I, now that I think of it, I'm, I'm talking about food. Um, and what I notice is that I'm, um, I'm making like more saliva in my mouth, right? That's a, sort of a puzzle effect. Thinking about food uh, gets that uh, digestive system activated. Um, and that only happens when you picture a plate of food or when you actually see it uh, and you can see and you can smell and you can, you can touch the food the digestive system gets activated. What happens when you sit at your desk and stare at your laptop, right? I don't get very, uh, my digestive system doesn't get activated when I look at my laptop, right? Something else gets activated. That's my work response, not my, not my digestive system. Um, so you need to, re, uh, to relax uh, in order to be able to digest food. Um, having stress, um lowers your digestive system too right so eating healthy food without being able to digest is stressful on the body itself okay 
Um, so then a couple of tips to boost your immune system. First of all, like I mentioned before, eat food, right? Eat food is important, but eat real food. Um, and then real food, I mean the food that you would have found if you were uh, living in nature. Okay. So not the candies, not the cookies, not the crisp and chips, uh, but real food. Not necessarily. I mean, I don't. I don't mean raw food. I don't need to like mean for you to to munch down a raw broccoli because it's not that tasteful. Probably, I don't know. Uh, you can cook your food, um, but have real food, and then in the portions that have like work well for you, right? So there's multiple calculations to do this, uh, but the important part is that you eat real food, right? Any processed food um, itself is already stressful again on your body so um you eat shit you get shit that's the that's the main part uh and then um i don't know who of you has experienced like fasting a fasting state or intermittent fasting um it's a state where you give yourself or your body actually um the chance to recover the chance to get in this anabolic state because you don't need to um to react to the food right in a way um eating and having food in your system um gives your body the signal to have a little bit of inflammation to test if um if the food that you have like swallowed is actually uh, good for you right uh, and not something bad um, so having a moment of not eating for a while gives your body the chance to clean up uh, for a while so you can do this like several hours or or have one week uh, or sorry one day in a week or one day in a month where you actually don't eat at all and just drink right, is a way to give your body a little bit of rest all right so real food is uh part number one but also eat in a rested position and rested state um can i ask you something Yes, again, sure. Yeah, sorry. sorry. <laughs> no, no, sorry. no. So, so, so I, I was very interested by this uh, uh, chronic stress cycle that is basically a constant catabolic state that uh, you basically have in. Yep. Would you say that maybe uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, let's say, starvation cycle would be a reset for this kind of situation? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah um having food in your system uh gives your body a signal that there's something entering your body so it needs to test if it's if it's good or bad and it does so by uh, a small portion of inflammation mm -hmm. um and and again inflammation is, is is stressful on the body so to not eat yeah like you said it gives you a little reset yeah mm, that's very interesting thanks cool um right part two is um to up your fat intake and this might be stressful for some of you um but having more fat in your diet um can be very interesting because um all the hormones um are built up from fat actually uh, and then I mean the good, like the good fat. So again, not the uh, not the chips, not the cookies, not all those trans fat things, uh, but actual like good fats from uh, avocados and uh, fat fish, uh, all that stuff. Like actual good food uh, fat. Um, and fat, like I said, fat is important for um, building up hormones. Uh, where cortisol is a hormone there's other stuff as well very important in this role uh, so um, uh, adding fat to your diet can be very um, helpful um, to get into a, uh, a, a better state uh, for your body okay. uh, one of my favorites for those of you that can see the whiteboard one of my favorites uh, in the morning is what it's what called a bulletproof coffee you can google this uh, and and I don't know, a year or a year and a half ago, I, I wrote a blog about this. Uh, Bulletproof coffee is actually a good cup of coffee with a, 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 a chunk of butter. Um, <laughs> some of you might not find this very tasteful, but it actually is. And it's a very creamy uh, 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 cappuccino, so to speak. So it's, it's really good. Uh, and it's, um, 
um, it keeps me full for a while. So if you're into this fasting state, this bullet coffee can really help you. Um, try it at least once. Try it. Okay. Um, then the last part is where we go into the supplements. But the supplements is uh, considered like the name supplement says it all. It it is supplementing your diet. So if your diet is crap, if your diet is shit, if you go to McDonald's every day or um, uh, you make full use of um, uh, your, your diet is shit, those supplements are not going to do very much for you, right? The supplement thing is only the last 5% of the pyramid of healthy uh, habits, okay? So your diet needs to be good. Uh, you need to be in a rested state, in a rested position to digest your food. And then those supplements can do the additional uh, 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 helpful stuff for you. So some of the supplements that I take and, and I think recommend easy, yeah, even, um, are multivitamins. Um, like I said, it's, it's, it's more multi, it's, it's a multivitamin means that there's more, more vitamins in one pill. Uh, so we have all the goods in one swallow. Uh, and in this case, it's two swallows because what I take is a multivitamin that is, uh, based on, um, uh, the day and a multivitamin that is day based on the night. Um, so this, um, these two like pills actually, uh, are made up from, uh, vitamins that are, um, helping you in this anabolic state, uh, throughout the night. Uh, let's say for instance, there's more in this, in this night, um, uh, multivitamin, there's more, uh, magnesium, right? Magnesium is helping you, uh, recover, uh, it's a mineral that builds up your muscles and your nerves, right? Super important. Um, and the multivitamin for the day has more vitamin D. Like there's a, there's a, there's a difference between those two. Uh, the other one that I recommend is fish oil. Uh, and then, uh, especially one that has only omega-3. So you can buy omega-3 and 6. I don't recommend these. Uh, I do recommend the omega-3. Um, because omega-3 is anti-inflammatory. Um, and again, it's fat, it's good fat, uh, anti-inflammatory, and it helps you with your immune system. Okay, super, super important. Um, it also helps with brain functions, right? So where stress um, can give you um, this stress response, but also in your brain, it gives you a little of a, a brain fog, right? Um, uh, fish oil can help you with having uh, better brain functions, right? Think better. Um, like I said, the other one, magnesium, uh, take it at night. It helps you uh, rest and recover. Um, but there's also... a higher rate of cortisol, less quality sleep. The magnesium gives you better quality sleep. So it, 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 it balances these. Two. Um, vitamin D, um, for those like we're all living in the Netherlands, um, there's only, I believe one month of summer in the Netherlands where the sun is actual like shining well enough where we go out in our shorts and shirts where we have enough sunshine um, to boost our D3 uh, vitamin. Uh, for the rest of the year, we're uh, sitting inside covered in clothes. Uh, so we're not taking so much vitamin D3. So I definitely recommend taking this um, as a supplement as well. Vitamin D3 has a very important role in uh, calcium uptake. Uh, but also on uh, the muscle functions Now we're all like working out and, and think that uh, uh, working out is a very important role in our lives. So the function of your muscle uh, can be like um, uh, helped with uh, vitamin D3. Uh, again, this one also helps you with your immune system. So the vitamin D3 is a very uh, um, important and interesting role in your immune system. Uh, and something else that it does is that it helps with uh, the bone and dental um, quality. 
the last one, uh, definitely not the least one, I would suggest uh, diet is vitamin C. Right? Vitamin C, we all know, uh, whenever we have a cough or a, a sneeze, we take a, take a vitamin C. Right? Vitamin C is an antioxidant. Um, and vitamin C is a very, very important role in your immune system. Um, I would go for at least three grams a day. You get already a little bit of that going on. Uh, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, anything else that is maybe too much for your body, just piss it out. Make sure that you drink enough water too with it. Um, it is very important for the production function of blood cells. Now, the white blood cells in your body are um, playing an important role in keeping your body clean, right? Um, so that's very important to have this vitamin C in. Um, and uh, what else is that we don't make vitamin C ourselves. Uh, we do can make we are able to make vitamin D three from sunshine. Uh, we don't make vitamin C ourselves. So we have to get it from food uh, and otherwise from supplementation. So there's not enough vitamin C in our food, especially when we munch down uh, jars of Ben and Jerry's and not the broccolis and not the, the other vegetables and the fish and the, and the meat and stuff. Uh, I think it's very important to uh, well, up your intake of uh, vitamin C. All right, uh, that brings us uh, for my part to the end of my whiteboard session. Um, uh, we've gone to uh, stress, stress response, stress reaction, uh, uh, into depth uh, with our cortisol, what it does to your body and it increases your level of blood sugar and uh, that guides us all the way to bad eating habits. All right, um, if you have any questions, or uh, add-ons, maybe Curly has uh, something to add, be free uh, to ask or talk right now. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah, Irun, what would you, um, if, you if you wanted muscle mass and you think you want more muscle mass, what would you recommend? What type of diet? Uh, eat a lot. <laughs> um, uh, if you want to gain mass and especially gain muscle mass, I would suggest that you like literally uh, uh, eat more, right? Because you're um, asking more of your body, but you also need to do workouts with it that uh, support your uh, your goal. The intake. Yeah. And any special type of food or just food in general, just healthy food, that's it? Healthy, good food. Yeah. If you do, if you do workouts that uh, that align your goal, uh, and you have good food, like good meat and fish, and uh, and and get all the proteins and the carbohydrates from from vegetables and other stuff, uh, and good fats, then uh, then then you will gain more uh, muscle mass. Uh, overall. Vegetarian tofu. <laughs> yeah. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> The tofu is actually a pretty funny uh, thing that is uh, where it says that uh, I believe tofu or, or soy products um, uh, increase your level of estrogen and estrogen yeah. is uh, the counterpart of testosterone. I'm, I'm not really sure if I say this correct, but uh, where testosterone uh, um, gives you this growth, um, estrogen, uh, well, in, in layman's terms said keeps you small <laughs> that explains it all yeah <laughs> eat meat <laughs> can, I, can i add something to that Jeroen? Uh, yeah yeah to, sure, that, right. um, to the question of uh, Jorge. uh so if you want to grow a lot like this whole story of you is really important that you outside of your training really you, you want to recover and you want to follow this sarki, uh, uh, so this uh Circadian, you circadian uh, rhythm but when you train you want to have a very like if you train properly you want to have a very high st uh, st uh, stress uh, response uh, if you want to grow 
if you want to grow, you need a lot of stress in your training. But outside your training, you need to go to recovery as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. So if you see, if you see, if you look at a bodybuilder, like someone that really wants to gain a lot of muscle mass, like they have a lot of stress in the training. Like you, you can't imagine, or we can imagine the kind of stress they have in their trainings, or we can sometimes, I think. But then outside of their training, recover, recover, recover as soon as possible. And that balance is very important. This right. is what I wanted to add. Thank you. Jeroen, can I ask you something about the... So I've, I've been doing now for about uh, a, a month the uh, uh, 16, uh, 8 hours of a uh, uh, cycle, you know, eating and uh, not fasting. eating. Yeah. yeah, the fasting cycle. Um, and I've been trying, I've been reading also quite a lot about it. So I started doing it just because I kind of wanted to shock my system out of um, a plateau that I had reached. Yep. Um, in, um, and I think it, it, it kind of sort of is working. Uh, but uh, I hear a lot of, I read a lot of very controversial things uh, mm-hmm. about this. Uh, and I, um, you know, I, it's, it's difficult to... Uh, uh, discriminate between what is actually uh, true and what is actually uh, a myth and what is actually the borderline between uh, these kind of uh, starvation, so, so this kind of fasting cycles and actually a disease that is anorexia. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't really understand this because you can, you read these people that don't eat for like four or five, 10 days or even more. And I don't understand how that works. So in, uh, uh, in this respect and how that can possibly be uh, a good balance between your anabolic and your catabolic uh, state um when you do this intermittent fasting uh what you need to be aware of is uh the fact that when you when you do eat uh you eat healthy food but also enough food to uh, uh to fuel you for what you need to do so when you only um, when, you, when you only eat for, let's say, eight or six or maybe four hours a day, uh, mm-hmm. really make sure that you eat enough food to, uh, to fuel your body, to give you uh, all the healthy stuff that, that ne- needs to go on in your body for those processes. Um, let's say for anorexic people, they don't eat or what they eat is not helping them, right? So they eat like, like uh, bad calories or, or sometimes spoken as empty calories, right? So maybe a sandwich and that's it, or an apple just to have something in their system, but that's it. Um, so you're not fueling your body um, uh, in, in, in the hours that you eat. Yeah, okay. I see. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Any other very interesting questions? No one? Anybody still here? They all left? <laughs> no, 14. Cool. Curly, you need to add something? No, oh, man. Cool. All right. I think we're done. So we do the sleep next week. Uh, yeah. That would be very, very interesting. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Cool. All right. Same day, same time. Or uh, yeah. Can you... Can you maybe also focus on how to actually achieve like deep sleep? Um, Because I would love to deep sleep. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I will, I will look into it and I will do my research (laughs) and then I, uh, hopefully I can, I can answer your question by then. I said it's knocking me out. (laughs) Uh, I want to, if I do the the sleeping thing, I want to do it very practical and then uh, just close your eyes for eight hours and then we're good. (laughs) <laughs> practical sleeping session yeah. no okay cool yeah I, I definitely want to do the, the sleeping thing and then um, um, Gerda has her hand up huh Gerda you want to ask something oh yeah you're muted she's muted let me see I can mute her Gerda you have to unmute <laughs> Um, can you hear me now yes i can yes um what is the best tip you can give us because for me it are are very stressful times at the moment um Mm -hmm. what is the best tip 
uh, sort of top tip uh, you can give me um, to deal with these stressful uh, to deal with these stressful times um, regarding food? What's your top tip? Um, if I haven't said it already, um, <laughs> I, 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 ah, my goodness, uh, one tip. Uh, I think um, uh, if it comes to food, uh, you should really focus on being in a, uh, like I said before, in a rested position. Right. If you have time to eat, make sure that you downwind yourself. Right. If you're at work or if you're stressed, uh, don't shove food in your face just because you have to eat. Right. Take the time to rest and recover for a while. Get away from your desk. Right. Get away from the work. Uh, don't talk to coworkers or like whoever is there. Right. Get rid of the work. Um, do something that is uh, helping you um with getting more relaxed actually so a breathing cycle can help right you've been joining the the breathing sessions at night right uh so well, yeah exactly so one of those breathing sessions can help where you have like for instance a four second inhale seven second hold eight second exhale do that for a couple of times before you eat uh that is really uh putting your system into a relaxed phase and helping you uh, uh yeah get more relaxed thank you so that will be my one tip <laughs> And good food, good. yeah, awesome. Thanks. All right, anybody else? Otherwise, we close this off, and then we're uh, we're good to go. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Good work. Thank you. See you next. Bye, -bye guys. Bye. See you tonight. Yeah. See you. <laughs> bye, bye. Ja, Jeroen, wacht even. Mm -hmm. Ja, ik zal ze wachten, maar er zitten er nog twee in. Ja, ik kik ze er wel af. <laughs> Mijn moeder, komt... moeder komt er nooit zelf uit. Ik <laughs> <laughs> altijd te vechten met dat ding. Dat kan ik dat? Ja, was goed, man. Ja? Ik krijg het er niet uit. Oh. Nee. Ja, 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 toch? Ja, ja, ja cool. Zo. Ja, ik vind het leuk om te doen. Ik moest ja, even uitvinden hoe het werkt met, uh, met dat whiteboard delen. En ik wist natuurlijk niet zeker of iedereen het zou zien. Maar uh, ja. volgens mij is het goed. Ja, ja, hij deelt gewoon automatisch dan. Omdat je hem deelt, gaat hij iedereen, uh, gaat die, uh, iedereen wordt, dat, wordt die dan groot. Oh ja, ja. En dan, ah, dan, top. Kan, dan kan maar één iemand tegelijk delen. Dus als iemand anders dan wil delen, zou jij moeten stoppen met delen. Ja, inderdaad. Oké. Okay. Ja. Dus dan, uh, ja, dat werkt eigenlijk wel, uh, wel makkelijk. En ik zit op mijn telefoon ja. en ik zoom gewoon in. Ja, oh ja. En dan, ja, en dan zie ik nog steeds wel uh, alles. Ja, nou dus, top. Uh, ja. Mooi. Nou, dan kan ik wel meer van dit soort dingen doen. Dan kan ik dat met die slaap, uh, met dat slaapding, kan ik dat ook wel doen. Ja, want ik had meteen een idee. Weet je wat je, wat je kan doen? Is, uh, zeg maar, want nu heb je een live gedaan, maar we hebben meteen gerecord. Eigenlijk ja. wat je nu hebt, is een uh, één online les. Stel ja. dat je een ja. serie zou doen, dan ben je, terwijl je eigenlijk een, een klas geeft, maak je meteen een online les. Ja, ja precies. Ja. Ja, cool. Dus als je... En dat kan je natuurlijk hiermee doen, maar ook met je breathing. Stel dat je nou wat opvolgende sessies hebt, ja. dan kan je dat allemaal gewoon in een, uh, in een online school knallen. Je hoeft daar ja. eigenlijk niks aan te doen, hè. Je kan hem gewoon copy-paste. Of ja. uh, je downloadt hem en je plakt hem erin. Misschien dat je nog wat tekst eronder zet, maar je hebt gewoon je, uh, je school. Ja. ja, natuurlijk. Ja, dat is ideaal. Dus als je... Uh, ja, dus als je nu pre-sweeps en breedings uh, uh, pre doet, ja, ik ja. daar rekening mee. 
dan ben je, terwijl je die dingen aan het doen bent, ben je meteen aan de bibliotheek ja. bouwen. Ja. Ja, natuurlijk. Ja, dat is ideaal. Gewoon doorbouwen. Ja. Tof. Ja, dan zou het... Uh, ik weet niet of we het daar natuurlijk over gehad hebben, maar bijvoorbeeld meer van die ademsessies en meer van die, uh, van die pre-sleep sessies uh, uh, door de week heen. Ik weet niet of er animo over is natuurlijk, maar... Uh, bij wijze van spreken zouden we het gewoon elke werk, uh, elke werkdag kunnen doen. Zolang we uh, online bezig zijn. Ja, het is... Uh... Kijk, want hoeveel... Want volgende... Nick had een nieuw roos voor volgende week gemaakt. Oh, dan moet ik even doorheen kijken. Maar uh, uh, volgens mij was het een beetje uh, van beide twee of drie keer of zo in de week. Ja, oh, ja oké. Okay. Ja. Ja, volgens mij is dat prima. Ja, ik denk het ook wel. Dus, uh, Oké, okay, cool. Maar ja, ik zou, ja, ik zou daar gewoon meteen rekening mee houden. En als ja. je dan... En als je dan uh, want ik, ik, ik bedoel, ik kan ze gewoon downloaden en ergens neerzetten. Uh, ja. Uh, weet je, dan moet je op, op je Dropbox of zo. Maar dan heb je meteen... Ja, uh, ja. ja ik heb gelijk een bibliotheek. Ja. Ja, ja tof. Ja. Cool. Maar, Mooi. Heb je wat geleerd vandaag? Uh, ja, eigenlijk wel, ja. Nou, het is vooral het, uh, het, het, uh, het cortisol en het katabolische. Dat, uh, hm. uh, vooral de herinnering daaraan, zeg maar. De, ja. het, bewust, het bewust daarvan zijn. Dat, ja. uh, wat ik eruit haal. En ook het over nadenken dat je inderdaad bepaalde vitamine en mineralen... Gewoon de timing in de dag belangrijk is, omdat het afhankelijk is van de functie ervan. Toen je het zei, dat ja. Ik, ja, tuurlijk is vitamine D in de ochtend. Weet je, heel onbewust ja. weet je het. Ja. Maar dan, oh ja, tuurlijk. Ja. Dus, maar dat, uh, het geeft een beetje een kader aan dingen. Dus nee, zeker. We hebben ja. wel geleerd. Ja, oké, okay, cool man. Nou, mooi. Fijn. Top. Oké, okay. nou dan uh, ga ik nu ook eventjes uh, ontspannen en dan straks lekker eten. En dan uh, vanavond weer een uh, sessie. Even een stukje. Mooi. Goed gedaan, dude. Mooi, Goed. thanks. Cool. Ik uh, zie je snel, ja? Goed, man. Hoi, hoi. Doei. Doei.